The U.S. Supreme Court recently ruled in favor of a Christian foster care and adoption agency. So what does this actually mean for those LGBTQ plus families who want to foster children and adopt in the future? Well, we've got Chicago attorney J. Paul Daratani joining us right now, who actually fights for foster children and their families and currently fostering a 12 year old along with his husband. Love that. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, So what is your take on this recent case? We actually talked about it when it got passed, and we were told by advocates that actually we have nothing to worry about. Is that true? Oh, I don't agree at all. I think we have a lot to worry about. I think, you know, in the law, we call it the slippery slope, and, and this could be the beginning of a series of cases which would recognize a religious, a supposed religious institution's right, supposed right, to discriminate on the basis of the First Amendment uh, against LGBTQ individuals, which could then turn into discrimination against any other uh, minority group, uh, you know, for basically no reason except that they are a minority group. So is this something that you've constantly seen, uh, and especially in your own case, how has this kind of impacted you? Is, Is this something that's popped up? You know, not in my particular, if you're talking about my husband and my uh, foster caring of a child. No, not directly. Although, you know, they say discrimination is in so many different forms. I've definitely, we've definitely gone to an agency in the past where we've gotten what I would call the cold shoulder. (laughs) And, uh, you know, we didn't work with that agency. But, um, you know, I, I, I do see it. Now, living in Chicago, I think we see a little less of it than we're going to see out in, in sometimes the suburbs or the smaller towns. But a place like um, CSS, which this case involved, they may be the only game in town for a small or mid-sized town. And if an LGBT couple is unable to, you know, if that's the only agency that they can go through in that town – then that means that they're not going to be able to bring a foster child in the home. And Sherry, that just means that an, another child of the 450 or 500,000 kids out there won't have a home. And that's just really unfortunate for all the parties. Definitely. And the Supreme Court case, that was ruled in Philadelphia. But what are we seeing across the country right now? Well, what we're seeing is increasing an increasing boldness for the courts to enforce laws that discriminate against LGBTQ uh, couples and uh, and in favor of supposed religious institutions. And like I keep saying to folks, it really becomes a slippery slope because, you know, in the law, as I've been a lawyer for 30 years, we call it precedent. And when there's a case out there that's precedential, then that serves as the bar. And then pretty soon the lower courts, the district courts and the appellate courts throughout the country have to follow it, and, and it becomes a body of law. And that's the real danger here, is once you start on a, a basis of discrimination against any group, even if it is considered, well, it's, it's, it's really, you know, they've tried to justify it by saying, well, there's other organizations that the couples can go to in Philadelphia. Well, that's true, I suppose. But, you know, that, that won't be true the next time in a smaller town, and that won't be true in other states. And, and just like in, you know, I don't want to get into the whole abortion thing, but they start eroding at the basis of it, and then pretty soon you've eroded the rights completely. What advice do you have for other LGBTQ parents right now or individuals who want to adopt or uh, foster? I would say, well, first of all, I would definitely go through an attorney and I would be really careful about the agencies you hire, because even the ones that supposedly are not directly discriminating based upon religious uh, beliefs, they may be discriminating, period. You do run into it a lot. And if the end goal, and and I hate to say it because it's sad that we shouldn't, we should have to go around the law, but, you know, let's face it, uh, black and brown people and Asian folks have been doing it uh, for years. You know, it's just, you know, they have, you know, we avoid situations. We don't always want to fight. You want the end goal. And if the end goal is to foster or adopt a child, make sure you go find out the agencies that are really open to it and, and go through them because you may wind up with an agency that doesn't say they're discriminating, but they, yet if you're one of the couples of many couples, they're going to go to the 
heterosexual couple or the single individual or some everybody else before you. Yeah. And finally, you do have a movie out called Foster Boy that you were involved with. Tell us more. Well, it's a it's a film that I have the honor of working with Shaquille O'Neal on, and he's fantastic. He, it's a it's a story about a few of my cases. It's sort of a it's based upon a few of my cases, and uh, it involves a foster child who foster youth who has to fight back against the system um, because he was abused in the system. And unfortunately, there are a lot of private foster care agencies, and then even some non-for-profit foster care agencies that really engage in bad practices, such as as putting a child in a home that they know is unsafe simply so they can get their contract dollar amount. And so I wanted to write about this because, you know, in front of a jury, we can speak for uh, that case in, in front of 12 people, but I wanted to speak to the larger community and really let it be known that we have so far to go in this country. You know, we we allow for um, privatization of foster care, and now we're finally under the Biden administration getting rid of uh, privatized jails and prisons, which I agree with, but I I wish we could take it the next step and just abolish privatized foster care and return it to um, at least the state or non-for-profits that are not interested in, in using children as products. So that's basically what the movie's about, but it's also an entertaining movie. It's a, it's a courtroom drama, and um, and I have a special announcement if you want to know what our next step is. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. As we wrap things up, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, the we're, Shaquille and I are working on a series right now, and we're going to be pitching it to Warner Brothers, and uh, it's looking very strong that we're going to make a series called Foster Inc. based upon the true stories of foster kids who are abused in the system. And it's going to be a, a drama that we hope will be out within the next year or so. Amazing.